<laughs> well, I love me some Luda. Welcome to Flynn Dog Woodwork. Today, I've got a simple little shop project that I think is going to be an excellent addition to my assembly table. This is going to help keep my assembly table nice and clean when I'm doing all my finishing. So let's roll out and get started with this build. So this project isn't a super sexy project, but it's a project that I legitimately need for my shop. And it's an easy project, so if you're just starting out in woodworking, this would be a great project to add to any area where you do your finishing. So let's start talking about what this project is and how we're gonna build it. So typically when doing my finishing, I purchase these large rolls of essentially construction paper, and you can get these at any big box stores. I simply roll them out over my surface and they provide a lot of protection and make the mess just a little bit less. And I've been storing this paper wherever I can find a spot. Right now, I've been storing it right back in that corner. So I've been pulling it out of this corner and cutting off what I think I need, which is always way too much or way too little, and not giving the protection to my assembly table that I want. So I thought, why not attach this to my assembly table so that I can pull out exactly what I need and have it available at all times. And now that I'm storing my blades in this container and not hanging them on this dowel, I've got the room to do this. So today we're gonna to build a paper roller that will protect our assembly table that will give us the exact amount of paper we need when we need it. So what are we gonna need for this project? Well, not very much. We need a scrap piece of wood that's at least four and a half inches wide, and we need a three quarter of an inch dowel that's three feet long. So the first thing that I'm going to do is to clean up one of the ends of the scrap piece of wood. Once I've cleaned up that edge, I'm now going to cut off four four-inch pieces. So now that we have our four four-inch pieces of wood cut out, I'm now going to take two of those pieces of wood and set them to the side for a moment. Then we're going to work on scribing out some lines on the other two. So for the two pieces of wood that we're going to scribe lines on, I want the end grain facing up. Then we're going to scribe a line at one and a half inches from this side and two and a half inches from the bottom. So once you have those lines scribed out, you should have an intersection on both pieces of wood. What we're going to do is go over to the drill press and bore out this material all the way up to the top. This is going to create a little seat for that dowel to fit into. So we're essentially creating two hooks for that dowel to set into. Now I also want to round over the bottom corner on each one of these pieces. And to do that, I'm simply going to use a spray can. So with our layout lines in place, you should have something that sort of looks like this. And here I've scribbled out the areas that will be waste material. So let's go over to the drill press and start cutting out these pieces. So over at the drill press, I'm only going to drill one hole, and that's right where those two lines intersected. And I'm going to use a 7 8 Forstner bit. And the reason we're using a 7 8 Forstner bit is because we're using a 3 quarters of an inch dowel. This will allow the dowel to slide into place, but it won't wiggle so much that it will fall out. So with my crosshairs lined up with the intersection of our two scribe lines, I'll go ahead and drill out those two holes. So with our hole drilled out, you can see how that dowel will fit into that hole and it's loose, but not too loose. And now that we have this hole bored out, I now want to take my ruler and align it with each side of that circle and scribe a line to the very top. And it's these straight lines that we just marked out with the ruler that we're going to use to cut out the rest of the material. And we're going to do that over at the bandsaw. So let's head over there. So there's two cuts that we need to make over at the bandsaw. The first cut is to follow our two straight lines to remove the rest of the material for our hanger. We also want to cut out this area on the corner so that it's nice and rounded. So now that we have our two hangers cut out, it's now time to go back to those other two pieces and make some adjustments to those. 
So these two pieces are just going to be the exterior of that hanger. So all we need to do with these is round over one corner. So we'll just go over to the bandsaw and finish these up. So all we're going to do here is cut off these rounded edges. So here's a look at what we have so far. These will be the interior of the hangers and these other pieces will be the exterior. What we're going to do now is laminate these two pieces together so that we have two complete hangers. And to expedite this process, I'm simply going to glue these two pieces together and tack them in with some 18 gauge brad nails. So now that we have our two hangers glued up, it's now time to clean these up a bit. It's probably time for a new bandsaw blade as these got really burnt. So I'm just going to go over to the belt sander and clean these up. And this doesn't have to be perfect. What I'm looking to do is to get rid of all those burn surfaces and make sure all the edges are completely flat. So now I have my two hangers cleaned up and all those burn marks are removed. Now I want to take a round over bit and smooth out this exterior edge on both pieces. So I've got a 5 16 round over bit set up in my table so I'm just going to smooth out those edges. So now that our two hangers are roughed out and sanded, we can now see how this works. As you can see, the dowel will slide right into those two hangers and we can place this paper on top of that dowel. But before we go to install this thing, I want to talk about one thing that really frustrated me with this design when I made one of these about five years ago. You see, if you slide the dowel in, there's only about an inch left of the dowel that will be used to support this roll of paper on both sides of the hanger. And since I used inch stock, you can see there's two hangers, both an inch deep. This means if the dowel gets pushed to one side or the other, there's a good chance that that dowel will fall out of the hanger. So what I want to do is to create two half inch wedges that will hold that dowel in place and prevent it from slipping. So with the rest of my scrap wood and my thin rip jig set up to a half of an inch, I'm going to rip two more pieces. Now with my wedges cut out, I'm now going to round over the edges with a sander. I'm also going to sand it down until it fits into the hanger. Now this probably would have been better done before I laminated the two pieces together. Then I could have just traced the shape right onto the wedge. So just by using trial and error, I'm going to sand this down until I get a good fit. So here you can see my two wedges that I sanded down. Now what I'm going to do is just eyeball it and put a little marking to cut them both down. And I'll cut both of these down over at the miter saw. And here's what they'll look like with the wedges in place. So now let's move on to installation. So what we're looking for is a distance between the interior of each wedge to be almost exactly three feet. In order to do that, we need to pre-install one of these hangers. So to do this, I'm just going to place my right hand hanger and trace it out where I want it to land. With my square traced out, I'm just going to pre-drill two holes with a very small drill bit. This is going to tell me where I need to do my pilot holes from the opposite side to screw in this hanger. With those small holes drilled out, I'll now place my hanger back to where it was originally. 
I'll use those small holes to drill some larger pilot holes in the opposite direction. Now with those pilot holes drilled out, I'll now take my impact driver and run those screws into that hanger. So now that we have the first one installed, I can now take the second one and place my dowel right in between the two of them, making sure that the dowel is touching each one of the wedges on the inside. Then I can make sure it's aligned and then I can strike my lines and repeat the same process. Well that's about it folks, the only thing that's left to do is to load some paper into this hanger and see how it fits. Well I think this looks pretty nice, the only other thing that I recommend is putting a small screw at the end so that you can hang your scissors. Well I couldn't be more pleased with how this turned out. This will allow me to grab the protection I need for my assembly table, cut it down to the exact size, and not have to worry about cleanup as much. Well I hope you enjoyed this quick little build. I think it's a useful one no matter how big your shop. This can be added to any assembly table and it provides you all the protection you need. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button, leave a like, and leave a comment. It really does help out this small woodworking channel. Until next time, take care as always.